Um, so not so reason number one, um, income inequality. I mean, it's a it's a huge barrier. I don't I don't think anybody uh, would would uh, would dispute that. And the fact is, is that, um, you know, black and Hispanic uh, people make 35 to 37 percent less than their counterparts. Um, and so when you when you think about what that means, that means if you make one hundred thousand dollars a year and one hundred thousand dollars a year is helping you scrape by, because the fact is, is most Americans are trying to scrape by. And so if you're making one hundred thousand dollars a year and you're just trying to scrape by, that means that there's somebody else in your office with the same job, same qualifications, same skills, only making $65,000 a year. So if it's difficult for you to scrape by at $100,000 a year, think about how difficult it is for that person making $65,000 a year. And that's that's those are those are facts. Those are what's sitting out there in the in the Department of Labor studies. And so, you know, it makes it more difficult for that person that's making $65,000 a year to think about retiring. Because again, when you're coming from a place of scarcity, it's hard for you to get your head around the fact that you're going to go above and beyond and do a bunch of extra stuff just because you can't afford it. I mean, the fact of the matter, and I get that all the time. You know, it's interesting because I had a comment on the channel yesterday and somebody had made a comment about, um, you know, did I win the lottery or did I get an inheritance or am I, am I retired and my wife's still working? And, and the answer to all of those is no. And the fact is, is the way that I got to being uh, financially independent at 51 was by uh, saving money. And I had just been saving money for a really, really long time. Uh, I was fortunate enough. My wife was fortunate enough to have a uh, have a little pension from our jobs. And we um, and we also had bought uh, a rental property at some point in the past. So that that generates a little bit. But again, it's you know, we've always kept our expenses down. So if somebody asked me, what's the number one reason you were able to, re- to, to retire? As I said, we eliminated debt. So we don't have, um, besides our, besides our house and our RV, we don't have a, a bunch of debt, which is, uh, we don't have a bunch of credit cards or accruing interest. And I think that was the number one thing. But again, when you're looking at issues of income equality, it becomes very, very difficult to get beyond that. Uh, reason number two, is there's a huge wealth gap in America, and it's 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 significant. Um, you know, when you think about wealth, um, you know, I think when you when you look at an accounting equation, they say assets equals liabilities plus owner's equity, and so what you basically what you own is minus what you owe. And um, if I'm wrong, please let me know I'm wrong. But I think that's the basic uh, accounting equation, and and. And that's the only thing I think I learned when I took accounting in college because I dropped the class not long after that because accounting just wasn't my thing. But anyway, I digress. Uh, but when you when you look at the the rate the wealth gap, and it, so it takes into account everything that a person owns minus what a person owes. You know, for black families in a in a, ni- in a 2019 Investopedia study, the uh, black families were at about 142.5 in their in their family's wealth. So everything they own, that's including their houses, their cars, and everything, 142.5. And this is on average. And, and, you know, anybody that knows anything about averages is averages start from zero all the way up to the highest number. And so they could be skewed. So the real number, which I don't have, is the median. But this gives you an idea of that range. But when you look at that same range for uh, white families, it's uh, 983,400 and i and i suspect a lot of that is due to the fact that um white families represent uh at the the wealthiest families in america so it's going to skew it higher and I, I don't think everybody on the channel is um making it has a family income wealth of $983,000 but the averages are skewed by the extremes and so when you take in the extremes at the top end, that's going to push that number up, which then would still tell me that there's less represent- representation of people of color on the on the top end and that we're probably more concentrated on the middle to lower ends, which I still think sends the same message. So, again, that wealth gap you know, is real. And then when you start looking at uh, inherited wealth. It's uh, you've got, you know, white households, it's fifteen thousand dollars, black households, two thousand eight hundred fifty five dollars. 
And this was a study done by the by the Wharton School of Business. And it's interesting because I know some of us are saying, like, well, why are we talking about white families and black families? And the reality is, is that when I was doing the research, there was not a lot of data on anybody else. And so I think it takes the largest groups that they have data behind and, and puts that behind them. But I think you can extrapolate this understanding across across different groups because it's it's not unique to, to any one group of group of people. And then when you when you when you take all of that and you look at the ongoing discrimination of people of color and, you know, the the, the fact that, you know, my father, my parents generation was really the first generation to start to see that transition to black families being able to accumulate and hold on to wealth, um, you start to realize that there's there weren't houses that go back generations because uh, it was difficult for people of color to buy houses in desirable areas through issues of redlining and how the banks were discriminatory. And, you know, and if you go back and you look at the fair employment and housing and all of those restrictions, those all came because of discrimination of people of color. And so, you know, the person that can take the family home and pass on the family home, that's not as common uh, for people that look like me. And so it, it really, you know, so it really creates a scenario where we're trying to build now uh, so that way we can we can, we can keep up. I, I have a good friend of mine who is at the baseline of that. He uh, he was he grew up in uh, in poverty and um, was fortunate enough to to play professional sports and make a little bit of money. And so he got an infusion of cash, and now he's taking that cash and putting it together, so that way he could build posterity uh, for his family. And it's, but again, it's not like his family can go back years and years. Where in other situations that may that may have been the case. So again, um, I'm not saying any of these are the specific reason, but I think they are reasons that play a part in terms of where it is. So if you don't have money coming in, if you don't have inheritance coming in, then you have to start from scratch every generation where, um, you know, not every family was was able to do that. Uh, number three, um, you know, higher debt levels. Higher debt levels plays a role. Um, I mean, it plays a significant role. Uh, you know, people of color, because again, we don't have the, the historical or the family money coming in and we weren't able to get the inheritances and so on. You know, we've had to take on more debt um, and, and other forms of debt to, to pay for things. You know, it's, uh, you know, it's funny because, you know, you look at student debt, you know, 90% of black students um, have, uh, have student debt where 66% of, of their white counterparts do. So again, these are all things that, that come into play because, you know, that, you say, well, how does having student debt take away from your ability to retire? Well, that money that you're paying on that student debt, that three, four, five hundred dollars a month that you're paying for student debt, um, you know, that's that's three, four, five hundred dollars you take away from retirement. So if I had money set aside for uh, for education and I didn't have to pay three, four, five hundred dollars a month then that's three, four, five hundred dollars a month that I could I could use. But again, if you think about the conversation around the dinner table, the conversation around the dinner table is how am I going to pay off these debts, not how am I going to retire? And so when you're coming from a position of of trying to figure out how you're just going to make it, you're not going to be having those conversations and um, around the dinner table. Then the next uh, the next one, uh, number four is employment discrimination. You know, it, it continues as, as much as people want to say that we've had progress. And, and I do agree that we've had progress as a society. Um, but, the, you know, there's still issues of employment discrimination. Um, you know, there's there's and, and I think anybody that um, that says otherwise is, um, you know, just is not in touch with what's going on in the real world. I was a human resources executive and, and I saw it. So if I saw it. Then uh, and I fought against it tooth and nail every step of the way, but not everybody's going to do that, um, you know. And and they may face you know bias in hiring, promotions, salary increases. You know, I think in one of my videos I told my story about how my boss played games with my increase, and so, um, you know, and so it's it's 
it's, you know, these barriers make it hard to install, you know, to, and, oh, I'm sorry, and can stall, you know, your career growth and, and your earnings potential. Um, and it, it, that just makes it harder to, to pull together the savings that you need um, to, to leave the, the workplace early. Um, you know, and, and another type of, you know, and I'll, I'll move into a different <clears throat> type of area here, but I, I think it's important to know is that even when you look at women in the workforce, because for a long time, and I think to this, to even to this day, is that the penalty for having children a lot of times in the workplace fell upon uh, women because women had to stay home or had to find ways to take care of the kids when the men would just shoot off. And so then what happens is that while men are still working, getting their promotions and moving forward in their careers, women are they're losing that time. And so when you lose that time, you lose that time to um, to, you know, move your career forward and make that money. I think there's I think with the new leave laws and, and some of that, I think it's getting better. But again, these are it's 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 not a bunch of bad people that are trying to make something happen. These are things that systemically are impacting the ability of people of color. And, and again, when I talk people of color, I talk people of color, I talk women, because I think we all have a similar, um, I think we all have a similar struggle and, and are impacted by these things and then find ourselves in a similar circumstance because as time goes on, you know, we time waits for no person and time goes on and you lose the ability to build in those, in those crucial years, uh, months and years. And then number five, which again, I think is, I, I mentioned this is a special one to me because it's a, this really is the, is the genesis for the channel is, you know, number five is, you know, limited access to uh, financial resources and education. Um, you know, access to financial resources and education is crucial for effective retirement planning because, you know, it's, it's, if you're not having the conversations about how to save money, then the different ways to save money aren't becoming apparent to you. So there's kids that don't know how to use a checking account. There's kids that don't know how to budget. You know, there's, uh, we do a great job of consuming, but we haven't had the opportunity to save a lot. And, you know, I think that, um, a lot of it comes from the fact that historically, um, you know, different people have had different access to uh, to different goods and services. And so now that there's more access and, and you know, we as people of color are able to get jobs and, and make a little bit of money and stuff like that. You know, next the next piece is how do I save that money? Because, you know, we, we talk a lot about I'm going to save my money and live off of the interest. And that sounds good theoretically, but how do you do that? And so, you know, you've got to have the education. You've got to have the conversation with the kids when they're young about financial acumen. You know, the wrong time to talk about financial acumen is when, you know, I always think about pro athletes is once somebody gets their first two million dollar check. Because, yeah, it's easy to have financial acumen when you have the money. But the thing is, is how do you keep from going broke? And if nobody's had that conversation with you, then guess what? You're probably going to end up broke. Um, you know, and the, and the thing is, is unfortunately, you know, communities of color, you know, have less access to financial literacy programs. You know, when I was in high school, I never had anybody come into my high school and talk to me about how to manage my money. I never had anybody come in and talk about the importance of investing. It wasn't until I was 23 years old, 22, 23 years old, that I had somebody sit down with me and talk about the importance of putting money, um, you know, into a 401k. You know, I knew about the idea of paying myself and those types of things, but I didn't really understand how that, how going into a retirement account was any different than going into a savings account. And then once I figured that out, and, and and tried it out and put some money into it and saw it grow, then I was sold. But it was it was overcoming that initial hump and uh, and and getting that advice and having somebody sit down and tell me. And so, you know, so one of the reason I say that this channel is key to that is because I think it's one of the things that I'm trying to do is provide information in a way that's not threatening, in a way that 
you know, it makes sense. And again, it's not going to resonate with everybody, but my goal isn't to resonate with everybody. I think if you resonate with everybody, then you resonate with no one. And so, but my goal is to, to help provide uh, some line of sight to information that exists. So that way you can either challenge me or you go and you talk to a financial pres- uh, professional and get the answer to your question. But at least you know that compound interest exists. At least you know that 401ks exist. At least you know that 457 deferred uh, non-qualified deferred compensation plans exist. At least now you know money market uh, plans exist. At least now you know that ETFs exist. At least now you know that you're able as a as Joe Citizen to make money um, in the stock market. And I don't care who you are. I just happen to be um, talking to to uh, to uh, you know people that are that are looking to try to retire. I don't care if you're already retired. You could. You could be retired and not know this stuff and and find a new way to get there. But again, the idea is, is I want people to just have the information. That's that's why I've pledged you. I'm not selling you anything. I'm not trying to get anything for free. I just want to make sure I get some of the information out because I was a person that was a guinea pig that tried that information out. When I heard about it, I did it and then fin- found financial independence and retired it at 51. Um and, you know, and the, and the thing is, is that the lack of access to this kind of information, you know, it, it impacts your ability to make informed decisions. You know, I, I think, you know, when I when I talked about in the introduction of this show here, uh, of this episode, is that, you know, a lot of people want to help. A lot of people want to uh, they see that other people may not have it as good as them. And I think people are kind of in this place where they don't want to be demonized because they're different or feel like that. But what they want to do is they want to say, OK. I didn't do that. I think it's wrong. I want to help. And I always tell people that the one thing that people can do um, is empathize. You know, a lot of times because something because we haven't experienced something, we tend to dismiss it as not being real or as being fake or something like that, because we just don't understand that to be a reality. And the fact of the matter is, is different people live in different realities in the same country, in the same state, in the same city. And so when somebody comes to you, and tells you that something is a problem or that they've been treated a certain way or that it's difficult for them to overcome a certain hump, instead of dismissing them, acknowledge the fact that what they're saying is valid, listen to them, and try to figure out how you might be able to lend some help to that. And I've had a host of people do that for me and giving me good information and good guidance and good advice. And I would suggest that you do the same. And if if one person does that, and on this channel, then I'm satisfied. I've accomplished what I want to accomplish because that's one person now that's better off um, because of, of, of somebody doing that. And if you've done that or if you continue to do that, let me know in the channel because I think it's easy for us to talk about bad behavior, but I think great behavior needs to be highlighted. And I think we all want to see the next person do better. I, I think there's not enough talking about how to do it. It's just about a, a lot of talk about what it is. And so uh, but, you know, I think if you can take the empathy and, and operate based on that empathy, then you'll find yourself in a better place. So, again, so just to, to conclude uh, this video, um, you know, the, the purpose here is not to provide excuses. It's it's just to provide some context. You know, we talk about these things. These things are real. They sit out in our society. Uh, I, I, the idea here is to say, look, why is that? You know, I hear this story that people were 35 to 37 percent less why is that you know i hear there's a difference in there's a wealth gap or there's a there's a gap in 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 what people are getting paid and understanding kind of in context how that affects the the bigger picture and you know i think i i firmly believe that the better we the the more we understand about each other the better position we're going to be able to help in a meaningful way um, you know, it's it's easy to say, well, I'm just going to give you five dollars to help you out. But is that meaningful? And so the more I understand you, the more I can help you in a way that's meaningful um, to you, because I'm, I'm taking the time to understand your plight, your circumstance and your situation. Um, and I, I think that, you know, while a lot of these challenges are are, are significant, and I, I think they're incredibly significant. Um, I don't think they're insurmountable. I think that. You know, if we continue down the path that we're on and we continue trying to help each other and we continue to uh, assume the best in each other and and do the things that 
we think are, are going to be helpful to the individual based on their particular sets of circumstances, then eventually we start to see a tide turn. And I, I you know, I venture to say that I think um, a lot of things have um, have gotten better. Um, I think, you know, I, I still think, you know, there's an opportunity with attitudes, but, you know, I think there's always going to be an opportunity with attitudes. But I think overall, things have gotten better. Um, and I, I think we have to continue, continue down the path. And, you know, I think by acknowledging, you know, these disparities and working towards systemic change, we can create a more equitable path to, to early retirement for everyone, because none of us were made to work until we're 80 years old. And um, people that are 80 years old that are still working are telling you or telling me that, you know, they wish they would have followed some of the earlier advice. So, you know, again, I, I think there's a there's an opportunity that sits here uh, somewhere in the margins to to really drive and, and help people. I, I think it's important for people to understand what some of the challenges others have, you know, just like I think it's important uh, for me when I sit down with my wife to understand what some of the challenges she has as a woman in America, because I mean, everybody's got a different set of challenges. I mean, if you're watching this channel, uh, I, I guarantee you, you've got challenges too. And our responsibility together in this community is to help each other. Um, that's why we're here. I'm here to help you. It's my hope that your goal is to help others, um, you know, either directly or indirectly with, with good information um, or, or inspiration. Sometimes it just takes inspiration. So again, I just want to take an opportunity to thank you for watching. You know, if you found this video informative, you know, please comment. Um, you know, you can consider subscribing uh, to the channel. Uh, I, I, I bring out new uh, videos or I, I, I release new videos on Wednesdays and Saturdays. Um, I, uh, I try to put together some shorts on Sundays and then sometimes during the week just to provide a little burst of information. But again, the idea here is never to have all of the answers to any one topic, but to be able to put us in position to ask um, good questions. And if there's something you have questions about that might need a little bit of research, let me know. And then we could take a look and, and try to get an answer and I could bring it, bring an episode around that. Um, but I, I, you know, the goal is to help all of us achieve financial freedom and, you know, and, and let's not ever forget um that together we can make a difference. So on that note, have a good rest of your day and I will talk to you soon.